With the nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, there has been renewed discussion about the possibility of overturning Roe v. Wade. Mr. Negron, you are staunchly pro-life. If Roe v. Wade is overturned and you are a member of Congress, what bill would you author or immediately sign on to to restrict access to abortion? Well, Sharice, you know, I think that when everybody talks about a nominee to the Supreme Court, we should look at it um, in, a, in, a, in the confines of a single decision that a previous Supreme Court made. We need to look at this in the situation of is somebody being nominated to the Supreme Court that interprets the Constitution the way it was intended and the way our founding fathers had put it together. I know the left side and Congressman, Congresswoman Custer wants to talk about Roe v. Wade and wants to talk about the ACA, you know, because that's how they look at the Supreme Court. They look at the Supreme Court as a bench to legislate. That's not what the Supreme Court is about. The Supreme Court is about interpretation of the Constitution as it applies to the, to the country. And so, you know, whether or not the ACA is overthrown, whether or not um, Roe v. Wade is overthrown is really not the issue. The issue is, is Judge Barrett the right person to be nominated to the Supreme Court? Clearly she is. Clearly she has impeccable um, standards, um, unbelievable background. And I think we're going to have her the next Supreme Court on Monday when the whole Senate takes a vote. But Mr. Negron, would there be legislation that you would support or want to sign on to that would restrict access to abortion? Well, you know, it's very clear, Sharice, you know, it's no, it's not, it's not a secret to anybody watching um, that I'm a pro-life candidate. But the thing that's important is that, you know, those people that will make that decision, and there will be some, and I wish they wouldn't, I'm still going to be for them, be there for them on the backside of it. You know, it's not going to be a situation where they go through a facility and they get, uh, they terminate their pregnancy and then they're forgotten. You know, because of my faith, I'm going to be there for everybody, regardless of their decision. And that's how I look at the legislation. Congresswoman Custer, you are staunchly pro-choice. If Roe v. Wade is upheld and Congress feels empowered to codify abortion rights, how far would you be willing to go in allowing late-term elective abortions? Well, let me just say, and thank you, Sharice, for the question. Don't take my word for it. It's Donald Trump who chose Amy Coney Barrett because she will overturn the Affordable Care Act, will lose coverage for pre-existing conditions, and overturn Roe v. Wade. And my opponent's position is really very extreme. He does not believe in any termination of pregnancy, even in the life of the mother or rape or incest. I was an adoption attorney for 25 years, so I feel I've walked the walk on this issue and I feel very strongly. I think Roe v. Wade balanced the equities and I believe that that is the, should be the law of the land. It is. And if it's overturned, we will codify it in a Democratic Congress. You were invoked, Mr. Negron. Yes, thank you. You know, talk about extreme. Um, you know, you, you support a bill that actually would take a life after it's actually been birthed by a mother. That's extreme. And, you know, and, and I've heard Excuse you say... Me, Mr. Negron, I, that's not even possible. I've, 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 that's I've, not I've, even I've heard possible. you often that's say murder. that you're an adoption attorney, <laughs> and I think that your stance on life is kind of bad for business. Um, what I believe in is that there's a situation out there that these women, some of them will make that harsh decision, absolutely, but we need to be there for them regardless of it. And the so that's the situation role, we go forward. Mr. So Negron. That's I think that's, that's where we differ. You, we I've do. represented over 300 birth mothers. They were facing a difficult decision. They chose to carry the pregnancy, place the child for adoption. Not once did one of those birth mothers want the government to make that decision. And, I, I and that's where you, you and I are life. different. I applaud you for those 300 babies that were born.